1 Chronicles chapter 9 All Israel was listed in the genealogies in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. They were taken captive to Babylon because of their unfaithfulness. Now the first to resettle on their own property in their own towns were some Israelites, priests, Levites, and temple servants. Those from Judah, from Benjamin, and from Ephraim and Manasseh who lived in Jerusalem were Uthai, son of Amihud, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Benai, a descendant of Perez, son of Judah. Of the Shelanites, Isaiah the firstborn and his sons. Of the Zerahites, Jewel. The people from Judah numbered 690. Of the Benjaminites, Salu, son of Mushalam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasanua. Ibniah, son of Jeroham, Eli, son of Azai, the son of Mikri, and Mashalam, son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah. The people from Benjamin, as listed in their genealogy, numbered 956. All these men were heads of their families. Of the priests, Jediah, Jehoiarib, Jachin, Azariah, son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshalam, the son of Zadok, the son of Meraoth, the son of Ahitub, the official in charge of the house of God. Adiah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Pashur, the son of Malkaijah, and Maasai, son of Adiel, the son of Jazarath, the son of Meshalam, the son of Meshilameth, the son of Imma. The priests, who were heads of families, numbered 1,760. They were able men, responsible for ministering in the house of God. Of the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashub, the son of Azraikam, the son of Hashabiah, a Merarite, Bakbaka, Hiresh, Galal, and Mataniah, son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, Obadiah, son of Shemaiah, the son of Galal, the son of Jeduthun, and Berechiah, son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the villages of the Natophathites. The Gatekeepers Shalom, Akub, Talmon, Ahimam, and their fellow Levites, Shalom their chief, being stationed at the king's gate on the east up to the present time. These were the gatekeepers belonging to the camp of the Levites. Shalom, son of Kor, the son of Ebiasaph, the son of Korah, and his fellow gatekeepers from his family, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the thresholds of the tent, just as their ancestors had been responsible for guarding the entrance to the dwelling of the Lord. In earlier times, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, was the official in charge of the gatekeepers, and the Lord was with him. Zechariah, son of Meshelamiah, was the gatekeeper at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Altogether, those chosen to be gatekeepers at the thresholds numbered 212. They were registered by genealogy in their villages. The gatekeepers had been assigned to their positions of trust by David and Samuel the seer. They and their descendants were in charge of guarding the gates of the house of the Lord, the house called the Tent of Meeting. The gatekeepers were on the four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their fellow Levites in their villages had to come from time to time and share their duties for seven-day periods. But the four principal gatekeepers, who were Levites, were entrusted with the responsibility for the rooms and treasuries in the house of God. They would spend the night stationed round the house of God because they had to guard it, and they had charge of the key for opening it each morning. Some of them were in charge of the articles used in the temple service. They counted them when they were brought in and when they were taken out. Others were assigned to take care of the furnishings and all the other articles of the sanctuary, as well as the special flour and wine and the olive oil, incense and spices. But some of the priests took care of mixing the spices. A Levite named Mattatiah, the firstborn son of Shalom the Korahite, was entrusted with the responsibility for baking the offering bread. Some of the Kohathites, their fellow Levites, were in charge of preparing for every Sabbath the bread set out on the table. Those who were musicians, heads of Levite families, 
stayed in the rooms of the temple and were exempt from other duties because they were responsible for the work day and night. All these were heads of Levite families, chiefs as listed in their genealogy, and they lived in Jerusalem. Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived in Gibeon. His wife's name was Maacah, and his firstborn son was Abdon, followed by Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadav, Jidor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth was the father of Shimeam. They, too, lived near their relatives in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish, Kish the father of Saul, and Saul the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan, Merib Baal, who was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah, Python, Melech, Teria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Alamath, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri was the father of Mozar. Mozar was the father of Bainia. Raphia was his son, Eliasa his son, and Azel his son. Azel had six sons, and these were their names. Azrikam, Bokuru, Ishmael, Sheariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. 1 Chronicles, Chapter 10 Now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him. Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. When all the Israelites in the valley saw that the army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled, and the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news among their idols and their people. They put his armor in the temple of their gods and hung up his head in the temple of Dagon. When all the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men went and took the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones under the great tree in Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord, and even consulted a medium for guidance, and did not inquire of the Lord. So the Lord put him to death, and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Psalm 137 By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs, our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundations. Daughter Babylon, doomed to destruction. Happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. 
Proverbs chapter 13 A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things, but the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves obnoxious and bring shame on themselves. Righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. One person pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. A person's riches may ransom their life, but the poor cannot respond to threatening rebukes. The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Good judgment wins favour, but the way of the unfaithful leads to their destruction. All who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a trustworthy envoy brings healing. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honoured. A longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul but fools detest turning from evil. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Trouble pursues the sinner, but the righteous are rewarded with good things. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. An unplowed field produces food for the poor, but injustice sweeps it away. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. The righteous eat to their heart's content, but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry.